For many people around the world, the potential impact of colony collapse disorder is difficult to fathom. The loss of fruits, vegetables, even forage crops essential for meat and dairy cattle. Basically, flowering plants evolved with bees, and so they need each other in order to survive. So without bees or any of the insect pollinators, you won't get any fruits and you won't get any vegetables. What you'll be left with are all the plants that are wind pollinated, unless you can hire hundreds of thousands of people to, to hand pollinate these crops. Humans playing the role of honeybee. It seems an impossible scenario from a dark future. Yet there is one place where the future is now. Beijing, China. In China, bees are big business. And if the bees make it, China exports it. Honey, wax, venom, bee pollen. Even a protein-rich compound called royal jelly that bees feed to their larvae. All is harvested and packaged for human consumption. China exports 90% of the world's royal jelly, 13,000 tons a year. Most ends up in skin creams and health products. But some royal jelly makes its way to beekeepers in the US, who feed it to larvae in breeding operations. China may be the king of bee products, but there is one region where the bees have already disappeared. Southern Sichuan province. In the rural county of Hanyuan, pears are the local calling. Pear orchards carpet the mountains down to the foot of the valley. And in the center of town, the pear goddess bestows an eternal blessing on the yearly harvests. It seems to work. Hanyuan produces 80% of the pears in the region. Each year in August, the trees hang heavy with fruit, individually wrapped before harvest to protect it from insects. A typical family will harvest around five tons of pears. But it isn't bees farmers have to thank for the abundant crop. The bees here disappeared long ago. In the early 1980s, uncontrolled use of pesticides wiped out the local bee population and killed off the pollinating plants that feed them. Fruit production plummeted, and local farmers watched their livelihood vanish before their eyes. I wrote a letter to Beijing, and they wrote back and said, you have to hand pollinate because the insects used to do it, but they've been killed off by pesticides. So now you have to do it. Now, each year in April, farmers must play the role of honeybee. And it's not as easy as the bees make it look. They start by collecting and preparing the pollen by hand. They scrub the anthers, the male part of the flower, for their pollen, and dry it for up to two days. When the pollen is ready, the human pollinators go to work. Dr. Tang Ya from Sichuan University has been studying the pollination process used by farmers in Hanyuan. Today, he has come to see the fruits of their labor. 
When I first heard about this, I didn't believe it. This is work normally done by nature, by bees. With nothing more than a stick of bamboo and some chicken feathers, farmer Kao Xingyuan conjures up the fuzzy body of a bee. With a dip of pollen, a light touch is just enough to pollinate the blossoms. Every spring, hundreds of workers take to the trees and pollinate the pear flowers, blossom by blossom. A hive of bees can pollinate up to three million flowers in a single day. A human can only pollinate up to 30 trees. It's a painstaking and expensive substitute for a service that bees once provided for free. I wish it would go back to the natural state. I wish the bees would come back because this is a really difficult situation for us. To replace honeybees with human pollinators in the United States would cost more than $90 billion a year. And even here, in Hanyuan, hand pollination may not be sustainable for long. For the farmers doing hand pollination, it's still feasible. But now, China is changing very fast. Most of the young people are heading to the city. I think in not such a long time, 10 to 20 years, hand pollination will be very difficult. Hanyuan's story provides a glimpse into a frightening future without bees and a reminder of how irreplaceable the honeybee really is. There's no artificial substitute for pollination, nor is there any concerted effort to even develop one. People have tried here and there to find substitutes for animal pollinators, wind machines, and certain sorts of vibrating devices for greenhouse use, but nothing 